Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie here on the Carnival Celebration. Hopefully you're a subscriber so you've seen the other videos in this series. If not, I hope you'll consider subscribing for more great travel videos on cruises, all-inclusive resorts, and travel all around the world. Here in this video, we are going to talk about the entertainment on board the Carnival Celebration. I'm here on Deck 7, just outside the Alchemy Bar, overlooking the Gateway. The Gateway is a new concept on the Carnival Celebration. It spans deck six and seven, and these windows have video screens behind them. There's a 15 minute time journey that takes you through time and space, and then each evening, different areas of the world are highlighted, and there's something very special on Groove for St. Jude Day. You'll find all the information in the Carnival Hub app, so you want to make sure you download that at home, and then once you board, connect to the Carnival Wi Fi. The Wi Fi access is free for use of the app, and then it'll have the daily schedule with all the the activities. So you have your trivia. Actors Trash is one of my favorites. We only lost by two points. It will tell you what movies are playing at the Seaside Theater, what the show times are, what the spa options are, and when the comedy shows are going to be. So there's so much going on every day. You can click the heart next to it and then that's how you'll make it show up under my planner if you want to start to narrow down the options. The Carnival Celebration has two theaters. They have a center stage theater and the Grand Spectrum theater. So let's talk about the shows that go on in each one. Center stage is a stage area unique to the Carnival Mardi Gras and the celebration spanning decks six, seven, and eight. The Magnificent Circus was one of the most popular shows on board. They show it four times. We arrived 45 minutes before showtime and still couldn't find a seat. So you'll definitely want to get there early and grab some of the good seats. As you can see from the acts here, you want to make sure you can see the upper levels so you don't miss any of the acrobatics. Now, I didn't love this show. I thought it was a little sad. Celestial Strings is another fan favorite. It's a playlist production show on the other ships. Now, this will give you a good view. I'm up on deck eight here, so you can see how the seating spans deck six, seven, and eight. Deck eight is going to be the noisiest place to sit because it has more people miling around you. If you really want to be immersed in it, you want to be down on deck six. So as you can see, Celestial Strings uses the big video screen. There's a lot of songs. The choreography isn't my favorite. There's just kind of a lot of walking around, but the violins are fantastic. Fiesta Band was a third show in center stage. This actually is a placeholder for an upcoming show called Rio Celebration that wasn't able to fin get finished in time for the inaugural sailing. They're hoping to open it in April of May or 2023. So it'll have a lot of fun Latin songs, but this was a great set of music. The horns are fantastic. Great song list. A very fun evening if you're really into Latin Fiesta music. Another option is the Evolution Dance Party. Do not miss this. This is going to be a late night offering. The DJ hosts it, and it's absolutely incredible. They bring out different musicians. So here they brought out the guitar player. Everyone is just rocking out. They bring out the dancers and the singers to sing along with the backtrack that the DJ is playing. The production value is terrific, and it's so much fun. It actually was my favorite show in center stage, better than the circus or celestial strings. And the highlight of the cruise for me was when the entire place went absolutely crazy when the three violins show up. The final show in Center Stage was We Are One. It's a tribute to all the cultures and nations represented on board. You saw there's Japan and there's also a tribute to Spain and other countries. Center Stage is also used for fun seasonal shows. So they had Tis the Season, a sweet Christmas show, and game shows. There was Cash Bash, Deal or No Deal, and even Build-A-Bear. Now the Grand Spectrum Theater is more of what you would think of when you think of a traditional theater. It has great sign lines, no big pillars in your way. I like what they did here. They gave you a doors open time that was about half an hour before the show. Lee, our great cruise director, hosted a lot of audience participation shows in the theater. Family Feud Live was definitely a highlight. You do need to audition for this show, though, so keep your eye on the Carnival Hub. Amor Cubana was the playlist production show. It was a high energy Latin show. Color My World was a little slower paced, but had some definite rock moments. But if shows aren't your thing, you could always head to the Punchliner Comedy Club. Carnival has so much comedy on board. Your evenings could be filled seeing all the different comics. Some shows do repeat to give everyone a chance. Let's talk about some of the amazing music on board. Eden was the sing-along piano player. He had that lounge 
rocking every evening. Back in the Pig and Anger Smokehouse, you could find the Backyard Band. They played country and rock sets. The only bummer here is the seating's not great because it's set up for dinner until their later shows, but you definitely want to be there when they have the special guests. The three horn players will come and join them from center stage. Oscar was the cocktail piano player that would play in the Golden Jubilee for pre-dinner, but he also had some special guests set. Cora String Trio joined him for three sets one evening that were absolutely incredible. It was a Beatles set, an Americana set, and then a British set. Don't miss this. Paul was the electric guitar player. He had an eagle set that was very popular. Reggie was the acoustic guitar player. She would play in the Golden Jubilee or the Latitudes Bar. A lot of like Alanis Morissette, Tracy Chapman. Neil was a steel drum player to keep us going in that Caribbean flair. He would play at Latitudes and then also do sets on the pool deck. And if we were looking for a lively set of music that would get your hips swaying, we would head to Havana Bar to see Mambo Magic. So what did you think of the entertainment offerings? Will you be signing up for any of those trivias or what band are you going to listen to first? Let me know in the comments.